Right, sunshine, skates on. What? I'm gonna be late for school. I've not got school, it's holidays. I've not got school, stupid. Oh, yeah, I uh, forgot, I'm sorry. I'm gonna call your daddy stupid. Well, he is. I forgot, all right. Now be quiet unless you want your backside tanning. I am, please. Come on, hand some face wash before you go out. I want that marmalade off from round your mouth. Don't take it out on him. I've not slept since Monday. What do you expect? Ryan, I know you're upset. So am I. But we've got to try and act normal for their sakes. Oh, yeah. Normal. Do you hear that, kiddo? We're a real normal family, aren't we? Your mum and your daddy are getting divorced for the second time. That's horrible, Brian. Don't talk like that to her. She doesn't understand. But you're right, girl. It is horrible. It's flaming disgusting. You're breaking up a family twice when there's no real reason. Sarah pulled the doll's arm off again. Daddy'll fix it. Yeah, Daddy'll fix it. Dad, Jeremy Cooper broke our fish tank at school and I told the teacher you're brilliant at mending stuff. Did you, son? Nicky, how would you like to go to the garage with your daddy today? Can I, Dad? Can I? Yeah, yeah, of course you can. I'll pick him up at lunchtime on my way home. I'm off this afternoon. I might take him into town. He needs some new shoes. Oh, fine. Uh, would you like some money? No, thanks. I'm OK. Yeah, of course you are. I'm not a flipping kid, you know. That's exactly what you are. Oh. Oh, God, Jason, I thought I could trust you. Oh, Mum, I told you, it won't happen again. No, it damn well won't. I mean, lads getting drunk, smashing the place up, police fetched in. What were you playing at, Jason? What the hell did you think you were doing? Oh, don't start again. Never mind, don't start again. Get your hand, on. I'm taking your hand to Mrs Carter's. Look, I said I'm sorry. You'll be more than sorry if the authorities cart you off to a home because I'm not taking care of you proper. Now shift. Let's have a look, Tris. Ooh, it's from Colin Pearson. Don't be daft. It is. I can tell he's writing. Who's Colin Pearson, anyway? He's a prat. Little and fat. A little fat prat. And it's not from him. It's from Roger Clough, so there. Did you send him one? I'm not telling. I did. Put with all my love and kisses from Donna. That's stupid. You're not supposed to put who it's from. Ooh, it cost me 40p. I'm not spending 40p on a card, so he won't know it's from. It, there is a certain logic to that, Donna. I, uh, whoops. Hi. Hi, Dad. Do you know Donna? Yes, I do. Hello, Donna. I just popped in on the off chance some lunch. Didn't realise it was a hen party. Oh, well, I dare say we can spare him the odd crumb, can't yeah. we, girls? Have we got time to go up and listen to the new brass LP? Who, not brass? Yes, ten minutes. Oh, ye gods. Twelve years old and sending Valentine's cards. Do you know, when I was twelve, I think my biggest crush was on Rupert Bear. Kinky kid. <laughs> no, but they grow up so quickly nowadays. I mean, look at you and Jason Stubbs. How old is he? Thirteen, fourteen, and already a mini lager lout. Uh, I don't think that's quite fair, love. It's just boys' bravado. We all did it. Uh, what? You broke the rules? Never. I bet you're always a perfect little angel, you. Clean knees, socks up, school cap on the lot. I'll have you now. I've pinched my dad's fags more than once, not to mention the odd nip from his hip flask he used to take to matches. I, uh, I think this is a bit more than that, though, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I suspect that Jason has been led astray by the other lads. Peer pressure. You know, if they're all doing it, he's not going to show his chicken. <sighs> yeah, but it goes from drinking to glue sniffing to God knows what. Oh. Who'd be a parent nowadays? Nicky, don't ride your bike there. I've got bulbs coming up. Poor kid. His little world's about to fall apart and I'm nagging him over a few lousy tulips. Having second thoughts? No. Glad the whole lousy business is out in the open. 
But it doesn't stop me realising what I'm doing to Nicky. For the second time. What about Sarah Louise? She's too young to understand, thank goodness. The main thing is to try and stay friends, for their sakes. I don't think that's possible with Brian. He'll never forgive me. Is that what he said? Well, he's not said much at all, really. It's mainly been hurt silences. He still doesn't understand why I want a divorce in the first place. Oh, we can't have thought everything in the garden was lovely. Not the way you've been living these last few months. You'd have put up with it. A lot of men do. Mm. They're out at work all day, go to the pub with their mates, play squash. Goes out with other women. Only because I'm not interested. According to Brian, if I hadn't rejected him, he'd have never looked at another woman. And the sad thing is, I think that's true. Give him time and come to terms with it. Don't see me, yeah. It's losing the kids that's tearing him apart. Especially Nicky. He's not losing Nicky. You're not stopping him having access. Access? It sounds so formal. Court orders, rules. It's not the relationship a little boy should have with his daddy. Well, girl, you can't have it both ways. Oh, God, why did I ever go back with him? We'd have built new lives by now. The kids would have got used to it. Why the hell didn't I stick to me guns two years ago? About time and all, you should have been here at eight o'clock this morning. The best laid plans of mice and stone cladding men gang up to glare. Oh, so, so is that right, eh? Well, my scheme of a, a job well done might just end up one of them in the glang of glaze. Yes, I might just cancel. Fair enough, missus, if that's where you want it. Put that back, Harriet. Ladies, change the wine. Hey, hang on a minute. I never said that, cheeky. I just said I might. No, Lou. Do you want us to start, or don't you? We've got other work to do. Oh, all right, then, seeing as you're here. Hey, and I want the job done proper and all. None of this cowboy rubbish. Er, uh, roofing job, is it? Somewhat in that region, Grandpa. With the frames? You're warm. Dry rot. Try Death Watch Beetle. Never. Oh, you remember to pack the cyanide then, Eric. Have you got Death Watch Beetle? I don't know, Percy. Hang on, I'll just unscrew my wooden leg and have a shifty for you. Or dry rot. There could be a slander case brewing here. I need a witness. In your roof. I mean, it could spread, could that? Infect the whole street. What are you on about? There's workmen putting scaffolding up outside your house. Oh, God, they've not come, have they? I was hoping they might have got lost. It's that stunt cladding our pier I was on about. Oh, that's it, is it? Hey, where, where are you going, bub? Oh. I thought you was giving us hand behind the bar. No, I've got to go and get Jason. The lady I left him was out this afternoon. Oh, but we're short-handed. Is the, the lad will be all right, don't fret. I can't chance it, Jack. I've had to tell Alec the same, much as I need the money. And it's all that flaming big mouth's fault. Hey, now hang on a minute, lovey. You had to go shoving your oar in, didn't you, Mr. Flaming Do-Gooder? It's all right for you and your snooty wife sat there in your comfy little lives, telling everybody else how to run theirs. Well, some of us don't find it so easy to do everything by the book, and not because we're too thick or idle or we don't care, but because we drew the short straw. So you just remember that the next time you go tittle-tattling to the police and getting us in even more flaming bother. Now, get out!
Look, if you think it's none of my business, you tell me to butt out, but... Do you want to talk? She wants a divorce. Oh, flippin' heck, Brian! Yeah, she told me a couple of days ago. Does Ivy know that? Oh, I knew there were problems, but divorce? Why? <laughs> because I'm the best husband in the world. Uh, because she loves me madly, because we're blissfully happily married. I mean, why the blazes do you think? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Is it? Is it somebody else like? No, not this time. Well, not as far as I know. No girl keeps things close to her chest these days. No, it's not that. Well, when you got married again, I thought. Well, we all thought. Yeah, we all did. Happily ever after. Fooled everybody, didn't we, including me? Well, you must have some idea why. Well, she's fed up with me, isn't she? Or perhaps she fancies a change. <laughs> You know, my mum always said, like mother, like daughter. Well, she wasn't talking rubbish. Hey, what about the kids? Oh, well, they will stop with her, won't they? Why should they? Why the heck should they? Eh? I mean, fathers have rights as well, don't they? I'm not the one that's breaking up the happy home. Why should I give up my son, eh? Tell me that. Look, I don't know, mate. I mean, uh, it doesn't seem fair to me, but you'll still be able to see him. I mean, Gil won't be unreasonable, I Gil. don't want to see him. I want him in my life. I'm gonna get him jam on me paper and one of me to mend his broken cars. Pestering me to help him with his homework. Come to the football games with me. I don't want to be a visiting father, damn it. I want me son. So tell her that. Won't make any difference. She does what she likes, she always has done. Afternoon, Emily. Afternoon. Looking good, isn't it? Do you fancy having yours done next? Uh, no, thank you. Oh, it's a sound investment, madam. Increase the value of your house, bung a couple of hundred on the price. Uh, no, thank you. Got more chase, some people. You're right, you're right, you're right. You're going out again, then? Well, there's not much point in staying in, is there? It's up to you. I don't have to go out. I don't mind. Gail, let's get Pauline round. You and me go out. Let's get away from here and talk things over. There's nothing to talk about. Nothing? There's our marriage. It's over, Brian. We've tried. It hasn't worked. I've tried. All you've done is moan. Let's not get into any more rows. There's no point. Just tell me one thing. Why did you marry me again? Because you wanted it. Because I did. That's the only reason. And you, ma'am. And my ma'am. Everyone putting the pressure on. Everybody wanted it but you. I was never happy about it. I knew on the day it would work. When we stood on the register office steps and you gave me that eternity ring. If I could have turned and run a million miles away, I would. See? So it was all a lie. Not a lie. I did care about you. But you didn't love me. Not in the way I used to. No. Was it him? That stinking lousy Aussie. It's nothing to do with him. It was to do with me. Marrying too young. Growing up afterwards. Realising there was never enough between us to spend the rest of our lives together. That's too good for me, right, eh? Eh? <sighs> too smart for me. Too ambitious. All that rubbish about you wanting to start your own Why business. Why was it rubbish? What was wrong with me having my own identity? You couldn't cope with that, could you? You're like summer out of the dark ages. A woman should know her place. She's all right in the bedroom, in the kitchen, and that's it. Oh, don't give me all that firm and it's crap. There are no complicated reasons, Brian. It's very simple. Not to me! We're not right for each other. I doubt we ever were. OK, then. You went out, Gail, you go. Don't be silly. This is my house and my kids. I'm not the one that's complaining. You and out, you go! It doesn't make any kind of sense, Brian. The kids need security. This is their home. They'll stay in their home. With me. You're not serious. Try me. Court had never agreed to it. Oh, it's flaming marvellous, isn't it? Your wife decides to boot you, I read, so she gets the lot. 
She gets the kids, the house, the flaming lot. You're not having my son! He's our son! He loves us both! I'm his mother! Oh, some flaming mother. You tell my little lad apart, not once, but twice in his young life. How's he gonna feel when he knows his dad's been booted out again? What sort of effect is that gonna have on him? Have you thought about that? Of course I have. What do you take me for? A hard, selfish, rotten little bitch, Gail. That's what I take you for. I wish to God I'd never lay my eyes on you. Hello. Come in. Is your husband in? Yes, he is. Come on. Ben. Ken, Sandra to see you. Before you say anything, I'm sorry about what happened at dinner. I just blew. Ken didn't send for the police, you know. No, I know. Well, it seems his delightful mates got Mick for vandalising a car after they left him, and, well, one of them told the coppers they'd already done over our place, and... That's why they came round. I'm sorry. I had no right to open my trap on you the way I did. Oh, that's all right. It doesn't matter. I'm just glad he didn't get involved with the rest of it. Oh, no, not this time he didn't, no. Mom, please. What's going on, Mom? Um, nothing, love. Listen, why don't you and Donna let Jason listen to your new tape? Go on, Jason, go with the girls. There's a good lad. Cup of tea. I'll put the kettle on. Come on, sit down a minute, love. Things getting a bit on top of you, are they? When I left Ronnie, I thought I'd finally have some peace and quiet in my life. Now, it seems I've jumped out the frying pan into the flipping fire. The authorities will be on me back if I do a full-time job. How am I going to make ends meet? I can't leave him to his own devices. He's not a little boy anymore. He needs a firm hand. He needs a father. Excuse me, Mrs. Bishop. Hey, I'll get you that one. Ah, all right. oh. How long's all this scaffolding going to be there, then? Well, till they finish the job, there's the love. But it's a blooming hazard. What if some dodding old person wants to walk on that pavement? What then? Well, you'll have to just watch where you're going, won't you, cock? <laughs> I'm more concerned about what it'll look like when it's finished. It's already standing out like a sore thumb. Well, Prince Charles certainly wouldn't like it. Mm. What's it got to do with Prince Charles? Well, he hates architectural monstrosities. You know what he'd call it? He'd call it a carbuncle. Well, I'd like to hear him say that to Vera. <laughs> yeah, Mrs. Duckworth, uh, one feels your height is something of a monstrous carbuncle. Yeah, I see what you mean. She'd probably end up in the bloody tower. Prince Charles doesn't have to live next to it. We do. Mm. I was entitled to his opinion. Anyway, he's right. I am hard and selfish. Oh, rubbish. I didn't used to be. Not years ago, when I piled around with Susie Birchill. She was the tough one. The one who knew where she was going. It was the meek and mild one who tagged along. All I wanted was a home, a husband, and kids. I knew what I didn't want. I didn't want to end up like me ma'am, dragging up a family on her own. And now look at me. You're not Audrey. You're stronger than she is, for starters. You're doing this from choice. What choice? You could still have Brian if you wanted him. But you don't. So, you're choosing to go it alone. Millions of people would rather than stop in unhappy marriages, but they don't have the guts. Or the stupidity. Do you really believe what you're doing is stupid, Gail? No. No, I don't. It's bloody terrifying. It's not stupid. 
then maybe one day Brian will realise you've done both of you a favour. I doubt that, Pauline. I wish I didn't have to hurt him. Poor love. He marries a meek and mild little thing. She turns out to be a raving monster. That's a monster. Doesn't deserve this boy. It's so bad if I didn't still care for him. But I do. I always will. There you are. Now listen, why don't you wait here and I'll go and find a taxi? So it's back to your place, is it? Yours. Hope your mum and dad aren't up. Don't be long. Don't waste your time with that Wally, darling. Oh, belt up. Let me show you what a real man can do. Look, though. just bug off, will you? <laughs> I love it when the play had to get. The birds changed their mind. I'm just the edge. Hey! Okay, all right, so all right. 